All right, Joe, thanks again for joining me, man. I, I got to start out with this. So you go to the NFL Combine and you, I mean, you put on a show, obviously, I think you turned a lot of heads in the on-field workouts. I'm going to, I'm going to be pretentious for a minute. Like as a longtime college football fan, if there's one thing that you know about Joe Milton is that you have a freaking cannon. So yeah. I'm, 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 I'm amused by, by the publicity where I'm like, yeah, this is what Joe Milton does, but how did it feel to you to kind of get out there and maybe show a new audience or a, a bigger audience in the NFL world, what you can do? Um, it felt great. You know, just an opportunity. I'm blessed uh, to go out there and compete with some of the best collegiate athletes in the world. Um, and also, man, just another opportunity to showcase who I am, uh, let the coaches see another side of my personality. Um, I mean, we're there for a week, so they get to actually be there with you, talk with you, you know, go through some things. So they get to see my other side as well. I'm curious about that. And I think it's such an interesting part of this. Like people at home see you throw the ball on the field uh, and, and you know, you got you got this big arm. But yeah, like it is it is a week long process in Indianapolis where you're you're getting the medical scans, you're spending a lot of time in getting these checkups and things. And then you got your meetings. Can you just kind of take us through what the week in Indianapolis is like and uh, and just what that experience is like from beginning to end and, and all of the time that you spend doing different things for these teams? Yeah, so you get there. Um, we got there on a Tuesday. Uh, by the time we got there, it's kind of like midday. Um, so we had a little uh, team, I'd say like team meeting, basically just meeting the general manager for uh, Detroit Lions this year. Um, and then after that, man, you just pretty much meetings after meetings. <laughs> and then you kind of just go to dinner and then you wake up the next morning at 6 a.m. Um, and then it's time to go do like your know, medical checkups, uh, be in a hospital all day if uh, you have anything wrong with you. Um, other than that, hospital, uh, you go to the hospital back to back for like two days and then you get everything else done. Uh, after the hospital, the weeks get pretty smooth. Um, it's just a lot of things pile up on one. Uh, you got a lot of like formal interviews or informal interviews where you go table from table or there's times where you go upstairs and meet with the uh, the general manager the head coach the quarterback coach everybody in that uh, nature so there's I mean there's times but as a as an athlete and as a athlete with great mental uh, capabilities I like to be able to you know just when I go back to my room get off my phone so I can debrief you know, just uh, enjoy that time and uh, actually just think about what just happened. I mean, you were a starter in the SEC, so I I doubt you're a stranger to pressure cooker environments. But is that is that tough? I mean, just, you know, the, the draft process is it's so high profile. You know, you got people on social talking about prospects. I mean, you're obviously you're hearing it from teams and coaches as well, but is it difficult sort of being able to block that out and, and just focus on you? No, nah, it's not difficult at all. Um, I'm not too big on social media. Uh, yeah, I post and things like that or, you know, interact with some of my uh, former teammates. But at the same time, like, I don't look at the things that are being said about me because at the end of the day, uh, what is it going to do for me uh, and my family? People are going to talk at the end of the day, whether you do something good or bad. Um, you just got to be able to, you know, you know who you are. Um, especially around this time with draft process, you get a great understanding of who you are as a person because um, you don't have your, your head coach or your quarterback coach or your assistant quarterback coach or your strength coach. You know, everybody's trying to text you to make you get up. Like, you want this money, you got to be able to get up and go get it. To that end, I'm curious about this as well. So you were you were a senior bowl guy as well. You went down to Mobile, and that's – that's also a process, you know, three days of practice and meetings again. It's a whole, a whole separate process. So over the, this is like six weeks now where you're getting pretty steady feedback from NFL teams, NFL coaches. I'm curious, um, good or bad, whatever, wherever you want to take it. But like, is there, 
any like what feedback are you getting from teams in this process in terms of stuff they like about you, stuff they wonder about you? Uh, just kind of what have what have you learned about what NFL teams think of you here over the last month or so? Um, they say I have a great upside. Um, it's not too many things that they can coach for me. Um, but you know, me as a person, I like being coached. Um, I like hearing new things. Um, I go by the saying, if you don't learn something new, uh, the next day, what's the point of living? Uh, so, you know, you know, and then other feedback I get is, uh, they didn't know I was that smart, um, based on the offense I played in, but a lot of people don't know that I went to Michigan first and my first two playbooks were actually pro style NFL or uh, style offenses. So I was able to do that at the age of 17 and 18. So. Let's talk about that for a second. Cause that's, that's a great point. I mean, multiple, you know, long college career, three years at Michigan transferred to Tennessee. I mean, it, it seems like you've been through just about everything. There was a COVID season somewhere in there in the middle of it all. You get to Tennessee. And I think that's a fascinating point. Like these days over the last few years, you know, Hendon Hooker went through it as well. Last year is, you know, people wondering about the Tennessee playbook. Does it translate to the NFL? But you obviously played at Michigan under Jim Harbaugh as well, which is like as pro style as it gets. What is your uh, comfortability with, with the different things that might get thrown at you in the NFL? And maybe just give us a snapshot of, uh, of who you are as a quarterback. Um, I mean, only thing that'll be different is like, you know, trying to get grown men to go, um, you know, they 35, 40 years old with kids and got, they got wives and things like that. But I feel like once they get to know me and hard I work, you know, it'll be a little bit different for them. They'll respond a little bit better. Um, but you no, know, all that takes time. Um, you know, all the great things in life takes time. So you can't rush it. Um, not looking to rush it, you know, enjoy these moments. But, um, you know, other than that, man, just our offense at Tennessee were, were, were different, you know, number system and, you know, getting guys into space. But, you know, Tennessee, uh, Michigan was more pro style, uh, looking to check versus, you know, different type of uh, fronts, um, different shades or if it's pressure that way, re, uh, re, redoing the point. But, you know, at Tennessee, that's where it helps you play into space and help you play on time. So, like, you have a lot of, you know, hots in, the, in a certain play or you can flip protection. Like, a lot of people say we don't do that at Tennessee. We don't have to because D-line is not a factor. Um, D-line is only a factor in third down. But if we are ready to kick and tell, then there ain't no point for them to go hard in the first place. So, you know, at that nature, but we they do teach us a lot at Tennessee. Like, we do QB school in the summertime. Uh, so, I think the quarterbacks at Tennessee now, uh, spring ball by the greatest start in two weeks. So, they already went over QB school. Um, so, they teach you, like, coverages, every coverage, uh, what that person have, uh, run gaps, uh, you know, learning a run game in our offense so you know what guy's doing, things like that. I'm just I'm taking an educated guess here because I've been doing this for a minute. But in the times that you've met with teams, did they put you on the whiteboard a decent amount or has that not come yet? No, nah, they have. <laughs> how how yeah. I mean, how's that going for you? That's, man, it's football, man. Uh, I've been doing this since I was four. So it ain't nothing new. If you don't know something, ask. Um, but also just like just paying attention. Uh, I'm big on details as a quarterback. Um I feel like no matter what you do, uh, you have to explain the details or you have to go by details because uh, those small details add up to a bigger picture. So you've still got your pro day coming up here in a few weeks in uh, in Knoxville. I'm curious just because, I mean, so much goes into playing quarterback, right? And like, it's it's so different when you don't have a live defense. Can you take me through just uh, what, what your days look like right now as you're getting ready for pro day, as you're getting ready for the draft, like what's a, what's a typical day for Joe Milton in terms of what you're working on, how often you're working out, that type of stuff. Yeah. Uh, so it depends. Um, goes back and forth, but on a Monday, uh, we'll throw first. Um, it'd be me, Blake Sandstrom and uh, Spencer. Uh, we'll throw first and then, that would go from, like, 8.30 to 10.15. Uh, then we take, like, a little 25-minute break, and then we start uh, speed training. 
uh, with Les, um, all three of us. Speed training go from at least 11.30 to 11.30 to like 12, 12.10. And then um, on Mondays, we have workouts at 1. So we'll go to workouts from 1 to 2 at Stance uh, with Naomi. And then after that, so we got PT right after. So we'll go PT from 2 to 3. And then I come home and I watch film. And then I turn on my show and I get ready for bed. Maybe every now and then you hop on a podcast with some guy who's asking you a bunch of dumb questions. <laughs> nah, I don't even do those, to be honest. Well, we appreciate it all the more then. We appreciate you for taking the time. I got one last one for you, and I know how this goes. So, you know, you're going to hear your name called at the end of April. I, I don't know when, but you're going to hear your name called, and one fan base is going to rush out to learn everything they can about joe milton and they're gonna they're gonna be watching this clip they're gonna be watching other clips what can you tell us about joe milton the quarterback joe milton the person for that for that lucky team that uh that adds you on draft weekend oh man you will get a great person great character um somebody that lights up the room but on the field you will get a playmaker you will get a dog um i come for nothing so i want everything um and also you're gonna get a winner um, win by any means necessary. Uh, but the one of the biggest most, um, will always keep God first. Um, make sure that y'all understand that too. Absolutely. It's awesome, man. Well, hey, we appreciate the time. Best of luck. Looking forward to seeing, uh, you know, how, how this unfolds for you. And, and I'll be rooting for you, man. Thanks, Joe. No problem. Thank you. All.